So when we use our fresh young coconuts, we take four chops out of it, because we make our own coconut milk here, and we lift. And this is the coconut water. We pour it right into the basket. Okay. And then Ari is going to start scraping the meat out. We use one of these spatulas. It's a hard plastic spatula, and we just tuck it under the meat, and we scrape all the way along, and we'll pull out that meat. And that's how we get a coconut milk. Right now we have coconut water, that is coconut meat. Blending the two of them together gives us a coconut milk. Okay, and so while we're making this into a coconut milk, we're going to start talking about what we're gonna use as seasonings for that. We're gonna make our own almond butter. We don't use any peanuts in the cafe here because peanuts are very high in aflatoxins. The only peanuts that are actually good for you are wild jungle peanuts. And then we choose not to use them here in the cafe because some people are allergic to peanuts. And so they probably wouldn't be allergic to the wild jungle peanuts, but I just don't want them to ask me if we use peanuts and have me say yes and then end of discussion because they're so used to being allergic to all peanuts. So what we do is we take some of those almonds. We already soak our almonds and then we dehydrate them again. And the reason why we do that is when you soak your almonds or you soak any nut, it awakens the enzymes. So we soak them in water for eight hours or overnight, typically. We have two food processors. So if you don't have two food processors, I knew that the coconut water was gonna take a while. You do the almonds first. So you want four cups of almonds. This is exactly an eight ounce glass. So. start buzzing that. While the almonds are grinding, we took ginger, always fresh ginger, and we took one whole head of garlic. And in order to peel the garlic, what I do is I take my knife and I push down on the garlic like this. And what that does is that awakens the enzymes in the garlic. So after I've done that, and I try to do that a little bit ahead of the class, so it starts activating those enzymes, and then we just kind of roughly chop it. Once the almonds have ground down to a fairly uh, fine consistency, I'm gonna add the garlic to it, and I'm gonna add the ginger to it. So now we're going to add that ginger. I, in my soup, I only add a thumb-sized piece of ginger. In my pad thai, I added two thumb-sized pieces. That's why I showed you those two pieces. If you don't like that much ginger, start off with one thumb-sized piece of ginger, and then increase to your preference, okay? But again, this is supposed to be an Asian dish. And I think that ginger and garlic are an essential part of that. Okay. So in that food processor over there, we took our four cups of almonds and we put them in there. And now I've taken my garlic and ginger, I've added them to that food processor and it's buzzing away merrily like that. So now you'll notice that there's not really any big chunks of garlic. There's not any big chunks of ginger. They're all blended into my almonds. That's what we want, okay? So if you still see big, and, and you can tell from the outside too. If you still see big chunks of garlic and ginger, guess what you should do? Do it again? Yeah, process it longer, simple. Okay, and then you guys all saw that we had coconut water, we added that coconut meat. Now doesn't that look like a coconut milk? Right, that's what we were after there. Now, what I do is I combine the two things together. And it smells like absolute, can you smell it? Doesn't it smell heavenly? Like it just smells so good. Don't tell me that you've ever opened up a can of peanut butter and had that smell. It hasn't happened, I guarantee you. And when you eat it, you don't think that it's an almond butter sauce. It really does have that nice same comfort that you get from the peanuts usually. So we're gonna go with one teaspoon of salt. We do only use pink Himalayan sea salt because that salt is good for you. You may have to use more if you're not using pink salt, but if you're not using pink salt, it's a complete waste of your effort. So buy pink salt or brown salt or gray salt. If there's only three things you change about your kitchen. It should be your sugar, your salt, and your oil, okay? We're gonna go with a half a teaspoon of chipotle chili pepper. So 
so we grow these raisins at our farm. They're not only organic, but they're unsulfured. And so I say one handful, literally one handful, if you want to know how many ounces that is, I can tell you. That's two ounces, okay? Between two to three ounces. And then we buzz it some more. And then we add a little bit of lemon juice. So remember all those flavors? We want the tart from the lemon juice and we want the sweet from the raisins. Should be pretty good right there. And you can give it a quick stir and you can check it by lifting up the thing. And if you see any chunks of raisins, you know it's not at the right spot. So we had four different flavors. We had spice going on from the garlic and ginger and a little bit of the chipotle. We had the sweet going on from the raisins. We had the sour going on from the lemon juice. The only flavor that we, and we have salt going on. So the only flavor that we don't have going on of the five tastes that we usually cook with is bitter. And we don't need any bitter in this recipe. We're going to have Ari tell us if it tastes good. It's good. We're ready to serve you. Now, you have to admit that we were able to make our sauce and we were able to make our noodles in the time that normally would have taken us just to boil our noodles. Yeah. So some people say that raw food is very, very difficult, but I would contend that raw food really isn't that difficult, that it just takes a little bit of preparation because some of the things we had to do in advance was have almonds that were soaked and dehydrated. And so mm -hmm. that's our beautiful pad thai, and I don't think anybody coming to your home would be upset about having to try that.